this is Writer's Voices with Monica and Caroline. I'm your host, Monica Hadley, and uh, my co-host and mother, Caroline Kilborn, is not with us today, but she will be back on the air with us next week. Our guest today on Writer's Voices is Elizabeth E. Botches, Ph.D., Lily, as she's known, is a psycho-spiritual counselor, educator, and energy medicine developer with 35 years experience in advanced body-soul wellness and the development of higher consciousness. Her expertise includes botanicals, gems, color, flower essences, light, and bioenergy therapies. She is devoted to helping people unlock their innate healing power, and the title of her book is is Awakening the Holographic Human, Nature's Path to Healing and Higher Consciousness. Lily will be giving a talk at Timely Solutions during their anniversary sale at the end of September. So we'll get a little more information about that. Welcome to Writer's Voices, Lily. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time, and I'm happy to be here today. So when are you coming to Fairfield? I will be in Fairfield. I'll be presenting at the library on October the 5th. That's thir- Thursday evening at 7.30. I'll also be at Timely Solutions on Friday and Saturday, October 6th and October 7th, uh, speaking with people, signing books, um, supporting Timely Solutions with uh, their anniversary sale. So correction, you know, I said their anniversary sale was late September. It's actually early October. So we've got that corrected. October the 5th. October the 5th. So on the, you know, Timely Solutions is really a good fit for you, isn't it? Because they offer many of the healing modalities that your book is about. Absolutely. Um, Timely Solutions and, and um, Pam at Timely Solutions and I have go, go back many, many years. And over the years, um, what I have been bringing forward to Timely Solutions is custom blending of botanicals, flower essences, essential oils, and also I personally developed um, a planetary gem elixir line that offers color therapy, as well as an alternative soda cheese to use for amelioration of astrological influences and also for balancing healing from the level of the chakra system, the subtle energy body. Um, So my book is devoted to nature's healing tools as a path for our personal healing and for our evolution and for awakening our higher states of consciousness, that um, I've used nature and all of her her splendor and her grace and her intelligence intimately and daily as part of my my path and a path that I introduce the people to who I work with um, to accelerate healing and accelerate our evolution and our awakening process and to help individuals understand what are the simple blueprints of nature, that it's not a complicated system. You don't have to be a naturopath or an MD or or even an herbalist to be able to access the intelligence that nature has for our personal well-being and our evolutionary uh, potential as human beings and cosmic beings. Now, Awakening the Holographic Human, um, the back cover says this is a book for anyone interested in physical, psycho-spiritual, and emotional healing, personal and or planetary transformation, the development of higher states of consciousness, or actualizing human potential. I mean, that sounds like just about everybody. <laughs> It goes from a a very practical level of what are some simple, safe herbs and herbal formulas that you can take that would support uh, the stabilization of of your heart, and then what might be more of a vibrational remedy that would support 
the opening and the experience of the uh, potential of the heart. You know, as we, for for example, let's take emerald uh, and the frequency of emerald. Okay, when I say frequency, the energetic signature and the color pr- uh, wavelength spectrum of emerald being green, it speaks directly to the heart chakra, and it supports the heart to open up and experience a greater appreciation, greater connectedness to to Mother Nature and all her creation, greater feelings of um, compassion and kindness these qualities of the heart that are our human nature, our human capacity, but through tra- trauma and conditioning may be limited in some capacity. So all of these vibrational medicines, material substances, gems, herbs, flower essences, they meet you. This is really critical. They meet you where you are and then take you to the next level of expansion vibrationally, energetically, of who you are. That we're built of layers of energy. We're built of layers of complex spectrum of light and color and consciousness that is held together by these universal forces like I'm going to hold that thought for a minute, but we're held together by these universal forces. And to get in touch with these these forces of our own nature, is awakening the holographic human is about awakening our own nature, that we are nature. And to access these forces, these powers, in all of their glory and capacity so that we can experience ourselves as the full potential of humans on planet Earth being effective and dynamic and actualized in all of the capacities that we're capable of, as well as cosmically um, sourced, uh, cosmically accessing our divinity and our power and creating presence. Lily, would you like to read a little bit from the opening of the book to give us a flavor of what it's about and why you wrote this book? I'd like to, absolutely. I'd like to start with perhaps the, an aspect that's in the preface because it's at a very early age, I feel like this was sort of my initiation energy um, that ignited me to this place where I am today of in, in writing the book, Awakening the Holographic Human. So I'd like to read this first paragraph. I learned early on that I was not from this world. I was five years old, outstretched, belly to the ground, and gazing into a blade of grass. When an instant opened, an infinity rushed in taking me into a wakeful state of memory. I had been intentionally planted here on Earth. An unshakable certainty rooted this into me. I was rooted to this planet for which I felt immense reverence and responsibility. The moment stretched into a suspended, all-encompassing state of awe. I clearly was here on purpose. In that moment uh, of what I would like to call initiation or awakening, uh, at, at an early age when I was five, was an imprinting from the divine, an imprinting from nature that catalyzed me into uh, a, ve- a very unconventional lifestyle and unconventional pursuits uh, from early on. So it's out of that spirit that this 
book was born, and it and it catalyzed me to investigate and explore what what is the the mystery around me. What are the forces of nature? the plants, the gems, the color, the birds, the animals, and then to begin to also explore the templates that these forces of nature um, operate out of, the template of the zodiac of which we, the archetypical template that we are a composite of, our chakra system that we are a composite of. These are portals that define us as individual humans. And so I'd like to read another piece. Okay, well, before we before you get to the next part, I just was wondering what holographic what a, you know, what you really mean by holographic because you know, we tend to think of holograph as something like uh in Star Wars where uh Princess Leia is being projected out of R2D2. Um <laughs> I know that's the, it's the first question. It's the question, and when I say holographic. I'm referring to that we are a holographic image. We are an identical image, a microcosm, a fractal image of God. You know that the the biblical statement, and in all ancient, in many ancient traditions, they say we're created in the image of God, and uh, that's not a, a man or a woman, but that's, that's an energy signature, and so that we are a, a perfected, divinely inspired, uh, awakened composite or signature, fractal image of God presence, God consciousness, and that the holographic awakening is a process of shifting our personal identity, our personal state of being to this transpersonal, um, unconditional aspect that is holographic in nature. And holographic, again, I'm using it in the context that we are a fractal image of God consciousness, God creation. We're, we're a fractal image of nature. Mm-hmm. We are part of nature. It is this, this transpersonal state of which we were born out of. You know, we're born out of a transpersonal state. We're born from a place that is unconditional, that is innocent, that is pure, that is all potential energy, that is light, that is consciousness, that is a transpersonal state. There, there hasn't been an imprinting laid over us. And as we are born, there's a, we begin to personalize things out of a three-dimensional conditional reality. We have experiences through our environment, through our family, through our institutions, and everything that surrounds us that collapses the field of the transpersonal interconnectedness with the divine. Mm. So awakening the holographic human is a journey back to our original blueprint, our original state of divinity that is beyond definition uh, of what we can imagine our possibilities to be. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Good. So, yes, yeah, so you wanted to read another section? Yes, let's... This is another section in defining the holographic human. In this book, I te- I've attempted to articulate the state of beauty that resides in every human being, that's the, the state that can live, be lived by anyone as limitations are cleared. This infinite supernatural state is a state of higher consciousness capable of anything, cognizing, healing, manifesting, understanding, and compassion, all beyond our ordinary comprehension of what it means to be human. 
the glory of this supernatural state is it allows us to shift from this personal state of reference to a transpersonal experience of living, one that is not limited by the conditions of our personal reality. Mother Nature is generous in her tools. She offers us humans, and my own revelation have been well served through the experience of flowers, herbs, stems, colors, and energy as they're applied through these templates of the chakras. So this book is an attempt to offer a practical, as much as a spiritual and mystical um, approach to understanding the spectrum of our human nature, both as a, a physical evolving uh, entity and being on, on planet Earth who is um, solving our personal issues of, of perhaps grief, separation, sadness, uh, finding our life purpose, um, learning how to overcome challenges and behavioral uh, anger issues, emotional issues, from the everyday issue of being a human being living on planet Earth all the way to the unimaginable, incomprehensible level of the evolving human as we move into the future as, and, and really are setting ourselves into a trajectory that is um, a new template for who we are on, on, on planet Earth and how we live on this planet in harmony with nature as nature and not separate from nature. Mm -hmm. It's to go in, deep into the mystery, the sacred and the sublime. And uh, I'd like to give a few, and perhaps if you have any questions at this point, that would be great. But I'd like to also go into maybe some of the practical and how people can begin to understand uh, the tools that nature provided us. With. I, th I think that's a great idea. I want to I want to make sure our listeners know that we are speaking that this is Writer's Voices and that we're speaking today with Lily Botches, Ph.D., author of Awakening the Holographic Human, Nature's Path to Healing and Higher Consciousness. If you're listening in Fairfield or nearby, this book is available at Timely Solutions. And otherwise, you can probably get it from any bookstore. You can order it. From it. Amazon or Barnes yeah. and Noble. Right. But kind of the solutions is a good place. Right. And you can, uh, if you live somewhere that has an independent bookstore, you can always have them order it for you. It's published by First World Publishing of Fairfield. Yeah. All right. So the practical, the applied science. The applied <laughs> science. So let's look at plants because that's kind of one of the most common and mainstream at this point um, pathways that people are uh, utilizing, exploring, learning, and growing from is the use of plants in, in everyday life from uh, nutritional needs to medicinal needs to emotional needs and psycho-spiritual needs. So I'd like to read this excerpt and then maybe talk a little bit more about uh, a couple of examples of plants. Perfect. Live in a world of plants. Plants are pure light intelligence. They live in the field of love and unification of all living energy systems. All plants are visionary teachers and healers whose role is to act as an inner guide speaking directly to the soul in the language of light, sound, smell, and taste. As light messengers, they send chemical codes of intelligence to the organs and systems of the mind-body, relaying information that inspires, regenerates, and propels the inner being towards the all-possible human. And so we're going beyond just, you know, I want to really 
support people in understanding the spectrum and the scope that nature can provide us because we're so accustomed to I have high blood pressure or, um, you know, my cholesterol is off the charts or I've um, sprained my ankle. And we're so used to, and this is absolutely necessary, but the botanical world, the natural world offers us the healing capacity for all of those needs. But then it can take us so many steps beyond the physical into the mystical and spiritual dimensions of our healing and our awakening process. Hmm. And, and, and can you give us an example of that? Yes. Let's, let's look at one of the plants. Let's look at a flower essence, for example. And let me just get to that. There are so many. For, for example, you can look at zinnia. And I, I have a nice, beautiful piece about zinnia used as a flower essence, as a vibrational remedy. And it's in the section uh, of the chakras. And it has to do with opening up the heart chakra and the heart chakra getting in touch with our inner our inner child. And when we think about healing the heart and the wounds of the heart um, and awakening the inner child, we want to go back to that state of innocence and that state of, of lightheartedness before uh, a lot of the scars of, of adulthood and the process of moving from childhood to adulthood have um, overlaid us. So Zinnia is a, a vibrational medicine or a flower essence or soul therapy. It can be understood in all those ways. But Zinnia flower essences touches into the deepest aspect of the psyche that houses the playful grounds of innocence. The intelligence of Zinnia essence integrates the originating light of the soul with the invincible strength of youth that knows no end. Mm. It assists one with the ability to see the humor behind life's circumstances. It helps to embellish life with a profound lightness of spirit that grants the personality the capacity to release its attachments to the actions associated with events, traumas, and conditions. As one's personal story takes on a free-spirited, spacious character, one becomes unbounded to live life as an expression of light, lightheartedness, lightness of being, and joy. So it begins to energetically re-educate, reconstitute our emotional body back to those natural states of who we are um, as an unfretted, fettered being. Mm. A bleeding heart might be another one to support the healing of the heart chakra when there's been a, 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 a heartbreak or a se separation or when there's a feeling of perhaps jealousy or attachment. Those are just two that... I can say they offer really practical, emotional, psycho-spiritual um, imprinting for anybody wanting to support their heart chakra. Again, if you, you can identify it on the level of, I have some grief, I just separated from a 20-year relationship, I just lost my mother, my child is going to college. You can look at these challenges and how they pinch the heart, how they create a little contraction, a little challenging around how to keep your heart center open, healthy, balanced, and um, receptive and giving without any constriction. And so these essences work to support those different categories. Um, but they'll take you where you are. You can say, oh, I have 
I'm really open. I'm loving. I'm unconditional. I'm kind. I have all those. And I can tell you that whether you take a gem or you take a flower or an herb, they're going to take you to the next level, the next octave of actualization in your psycho-spiritual energy body. Another example, um, does that make sense, Monica? Yes. Now, how do you how do you decide, you know, how what to use, which herb you really need, which or flower essence or gem? And do you go gem or do you go flower yeah, essence? Do you go herb or do you go some other some other way? How do you make that call? Well, the way I uh, a couple of different ways. First of all. Um, I've experienced all the gem elixirs personally, and I have experienced the flower essences that I used. I also have used and experienced them personally. So I carry the vibration. Uh, it's sort of like memorizing a book, you know, or memorizing poetry or a stanza. Once you have it memorized, you've learned it, and it's you're embodying it, and you can say it by memory. I've memorized these vibrations, and when I speak to people or work with people ongoing, oftentimes they'll say, look, I'm going through this, or I'm going through that, or I really need help with this, or I want to, you know, really open up my intuition more. Or They'll, they'll tell you that's partly a guide to where we can begin to develop a personalized formula. But also, I understand the frequencies and the energies, and I can listen to on the inner planes to what are the vibrations that are presenting themselves. It's a very kind of t- psychic or telepathic or intuitive process where I literally, in the, in the exchange, of working with an individual and guided to say, okay, I, let's look at this group of plants, this, these uh, gem elixirs. Let's talk about them, and you tell me if these are vibrationally resonating with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they say, okay, let's look at diamond. I want to give you diamond because I feel like it's important to because it's going to help important with clearing some of the sort of uh, ancestral karmic imprints that that are uh, very active in you right now. A lot of the sort of uh, thought forms, belief systems uh, from your mother are operating in you and kind of clouding your emotional and, uh, and uh, mental capacity to process uh, clearly and, and make decisions more appropriately. So I may give Diamond Elixir because it clears all of the chakra systems. It helps mm-hmm. open up the third eye in the crown chakra. I may give Ruby because I'll say, you know, I feel like strengthening your core sense of self-confidence, of identity, and being able to get a, a stronger, grounded uh, sense of yourself is important right now. So let's use Ruby. And so it's, it's a personal reading, in a sense. I read the energy signatures of the person as well as allow them to dialogue with me, and also I'll listen um, to the subtle intelligence of these plant signatures, gem signatures, um, intelligence as as they are very lively in my own matrix. Am I making sense? <laughs> sure. I, I'm wondering if, as you you know, if you read people's energy, do you like when you meet someone? Are you like automatically thinking, oh, this person really needs X, Y, Z. Well, sometimes that happens naturally. <laughs> but I really, 
I'm really respect people's boundaries, and I don't psychically tap into them, let's say, um, without it, their permission to do so. So I'm not trying to, wow, they could really use, <laughs> you know, this, that, or the other thing because A, B, and C. I'm very respectful, and I know how to maintain my my boundaries and really respect other people's privacy and boundaries. But when I'm working with people and we really have the intention and the clarity about setting a goal that will uh, act uh, a personal growth and self-actualization goal and I have permission, then we go forward in that capacity and I will share what I perceive to be um, appropriate selections uh, and combinations, and then I formulate a custom to needs. So, but sometimes I'll just, it, it just happens. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Writer's Voices with Monica and Caroline, and our guest today is Lily Botches, Ph.D., author of Awakening the Holographic Human, Nature's Path to Healing and Higher Consciousness. Lily will be in Fairfield October 5th, 6th and 7th. She'll be doing a presentation at the library on October 5th and at Timeless Solutions during their anniversary sale October 6th and 7th. So you can meet her there and learn more about uh, this work that she's been doing and the book. Now, Lily, I know you've been working with with these energies and, and in this field for a long time. I'm I'm guessing that you started out basically doing it for your own purpose, for yourself, how did you decide to start, you know, sort of offering, I don't, you know, becoming a, a counselor to other people on these, um, about One of, these things? Yes. I love to learn, and I love to learn in lots of different ways. And um, as, as I said, as a child, I had a, very active imagination, and um, that imagination was really what I would say. Um, I was tapped into the universal archetypical energies. For example, I imagined myself to be a doctor, and I'd play out being a doctor growing up, and I'd play out being a, a priest and a high priest and a warrior, and everything you can imagine. Um, and as I grew in this exploration of my soul and my psyche, it started. I started exploring more of the mystical um, and the esoteric schools of knowledge. I started understanding and reading and learning and studying uh, Western astrology, dream interpretation, um, uh, working with the tree of life and the Kabbalah and the ter Egyptian tarot. And I started studying these, these platforms and systems that would allow me to, to go deeper into understanding the nature of this reality and the energies behind it, um, which then led me to pursue taking many, many courses and certifications and polarity therapy, uh, which was an energy system based on e e the under Egyptian healing, Ayurvedic energy healing, and understanding the subtle anatomy of the human physiology. Um, I started uh, color puncture therapy, applying color in place of needles for, in the sense of acupuncture, but not acupuncture, you use color in this, to apply through the meridians and acupuncture systems. Um, I got degrees in my master's in herbology. I got certified in flower essences. I've had a lifelong pursuit to explore the capacity of what it means to be human and to understand the mysteries and the forces of nature that are behind our, our, our 
human destiny as, a, as an individual and as a collective species on the planet Earth. Because I feel like we're in this present state of a revolution in terms of redefining ourselves. We're in a, a paradigm shift, a revolution where the very nature of what it means to be a human being on planet Earth is, is taking on and will take on new definitions because we are moving into the quantum age that is beyond, it's, it's understanding the invisible forces that constitute who we are and the capacity of who we are. And so defining ourselves beyond our corporeal reality and temporal reality that has fixed linear um, moorings is, 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 is essential for our salvation um, moving forward into a new millennial. Well, that, that sounds very um, exciting and inspiring. It is exciting. It is inspiring. <laughs> that, that's you know that's the spirit I I come to and I bring people to that that place of excitement. No matter what age you are, to find that 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 innocence, that youthfulness, that ex, uh, that desire to explore, to discover um, all of these uh, hidden mysteries and aspects of, of who we are. And it is weaving, uh, it's like weaving folklore with, with modern science. And, and it's just... Which, you know, folklore always, often had a basis in what worked. But modern science is also, you know, has taught us a lot. We humans live a lot longer than we did 100 years ago or 200 years ago um, with the help yes. of, of modern That's science. The, yes, we're breaking the codes of aging. Yeah. And before, you know, we, we, we would, the folklore was based on archetypes. It really had imagery behind it. You know, like, for example, ginseng as a plant. When you look at it, it grows like a human being, and it, uh, you don't even use the plant until it's a certain age, seven years or more, because um, that's when it becomes active. It's that seven-year cycle, just like when we go through those Saturn rebirth cycles. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, nature and hu humans being nature is following these mystical blueprints these codes for um, revealing these forces that are just latent and waiting to be actualized and brought to life again in our in, in our experience of living. Uh, so. Well, Lily, let us talk a little bit because this is Writers' Voices, and we do we like to talk about. Um, the writing process and so tell us tell me a little bit about why you decided that it was time to write a book about everything that you've learned and how long did you spend writing it okay well i really spent a long time writing this book <laughs> because it was an evolutionary process within myself you know, I, I started writing, the very first book that I wrote was Plants in the Light of Healing, and you'll see that there's a chapter, Plants in the Light of Healing. And then I wrote a second handbook, um, Unlocking the Holographic Psyche, Planetary Gem Elixirs, and that's a chapter in this book. Um, what started happening for me is that I needed to synthesize for myself but also because I wanted to offer people a place to go where they could access the practical and the mystical uh, forces of nature uh, for themselves. And so this 
this writing project was a, a project that evolved over over 20 years. And it took that long, and the last chapter you, you'll see has to do with technology. And it's only been in the recent mm, 10 years that I decided to really uh, interface with consciousness technology. So it's been a 20-year process, and what, the way that I wrote it to a large extent, as I said, each gem was an experience a personal experience in consciousness. So I not only write it from a theoretical or from research that has been done over the years through um, Ayurvedic systems or Western uh, herbology or uh, other types of healing modalities uh, that are integrated in here, but really through my own personal experience, my own cognition of, okay, where is this gem elixir touching me? And it's doing this to my heart. It's doing this to my throat chakra. And I would write and record it. Okay, what about the template? How do I understand, you know, for example, when I first started studying astrology, in the Western system I had Taurus rising. And I was very identified as, oh, wow, I can be very fixed and I can be <laughs> slow to change and I can have this characteristic and my moon um, in Taurus would give me these qualities. And I was noticing I was identifying with, with this. And then when Vedic astrology came, I started realizing, oh, you've got Aries rising. And I said, okay, how can all this be true? <laughs> <laughs> all right, and, and what, how did you uh, reconcile it? The way that I reconcile it, and that's why I'm not a traditional astrologer in any uh, fashion, but really I understand, again, the zodiac is a template, that it's a composite of all 12 perspectives that when synthesized and mastered and matured for what their gifts and their powers and their spiritual potency and focus is, when we can synthesize and harness all those 12 perspectives as our own um, composite of who we are, that is living um, that, that is the goal. So I'm not trying to ameliorate my individual um, astrology. I may, to some extent, use that and understand that, but I want to understand where is my, am, am I impatient? Yes, I can be really impatient, and I had to tame that force. Now, whether I, <laughs> and master the forces of Aries, foresightedness, courage, uh, foresightedness, vision, seeing clearly, mastery of that archetype, mastery of Taurus, that I can have great appreciation, I can ground, I can manifest, I can um, cultivate, you know, accessing that, understanding that these are aspects of every single one of us, and not to identify with a single one, but to understand that this is nature offering us. When you synthesize the 12 in one, you have the capacity to see the wholeness from every aspect of diversity. You know, Lily, I really appreciate that because I've always had a little bit, actually sometimes a lot, of problem with with any sort of um, modality, any any uh, system that puts people into these little boxes, You're, whether it's numerology, astrology, uh, what color your aura is, um, uh, whatever, whatever it is, um, where I, I there were two things that I that bothered me about it, and one was that. 
I didn't like the idea of people saying, oh, you're number such and such, so you're this way and that way. And it's like yeah. they're defining me and not letting me define me. And right. the other thing I didn't care for about about those things, those types of belief systems, are that people I, – I felt like people used it as an excuse for their behavior. I can, yeah. I can see where that it can be helpful in understanding behavior, but then it's like, well, I'm a – you know, I'm a Gemini, so obviously I can't make up my mind, and so why even bother to try? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Gemini, by the way, but <laughs> just using that as an example. <laughs> <laughs> and so so I really like where you're coming from on this. Yes. <laughs> I, I had to reconcile it for myself. You know, because I, I have sun and Gemini, and I says, oh, well, this is typical. I have two rising signs. They're both true, so now what? <laughs> you know, but I do feel like these these systems have, um, uh, you can look at them as uh, focusing the light of consciousness that maybe you have a predisposition or an aspect, but not to be frozen and wedded to those predispositions or those possibilities or potentials. Um, because uh, we we are so much more than that, and that's kind of feeding into and locking us into the our personal story. Our uh, instead of right, right, train personal mechanisms that are going to liberate us from all of these uh, uh, overlays that um, systems uh, put upon us, just like you said. And they're useful for understanding the moment, um, but not to hold on to them in any way, shape, or form. And they're useful for maybe a little pathway or a portal into how to begin to approach some things that are ripe. And I want to use that word ripe for transformation, ripe and ready for the next evolutionary octave or cycle of your personal growth, transformation, transpersonal realization or awakening. And that's really uh, the spirit I come from when I'm uh, teaching, lecturing, or working with groups or individuals. Um, I like to have open-ended systems that allow you to embrace uh, and actualize your potential beyond what you thought was possible or definable previously. So in this book, in uh, Awakening the Holographic Human, Nature's Path to Healing and Higher yes. Consciousness, uh, you start out, it looks like, with kind of an overview of um, the transpersonal view of the all-possible human. And then you talk about... Um, the mythic landscape of healing. So there's a chapter in this where you go into some of the uh, traditions, Ayurveda, Native American, Aboriginal, um, shamanic medicine. Uh, and from there you go, you bring in the plants and the flower essences, essential oils. Um, and then I, uh, talk about uh, gems. Yes. And then there's a lot, it seems like quite a bit of focus on gems. So There is a lot of focus on gems um, because I feel like gems are one of the most powerful and simplest tools for addressing our chakra system as a color spectrum or, you know, our aura is a composite of the seven basic colors <laughs> of the rainbow of creation. Uh, and the gem elixirs feed, they're like food, they're, 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 they are, they nourish us with the, because color is food, and that is one of the most important things. They feed us electromagnetically with the, mm -hmm. a light spectrum relative to the gem. The other thing that I love about gems and why they're so powerful is because they're organized, but of course plants, the human body, everything is organized according to geometry. But a gem 
It, it's a composite that takes maybe hundred thousand years to form and organize, and so it has a very powerful ability uh, to uphold the uh, matrix, the infrastructure of our subtle bodies. Mm-hmm. So we have about seven minutes. Mm-hmm. Are there some, some more parts you would like to read? Yes, we can do that. All right. And, uh, let's see here. And you're listening to Writer's Voices, and our guest today is Elizabeth Botches, Ph.D., her book is Awakening the Holographic Human, Nature's Path to Healing and Higher Consciousness. She will be in Fairfield October 5th, 6th, and 7th, the library October 5th with a presentation and at Timely Solutions on the 6th and 7th. And this is 2017, just in case you're listening to the podcast or rebroadcast at a later date. So don't go looking for her there at the library on October 5th, 2020. <laughs> okay. This is an excerpt um, from the chakra system's dimensional bridges. Spiritual awakening requires us to bridge the physical and non physical levels of reality. This bridge is created and functions within the chakra system, an energy matrix that governs the essential process of evolution on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, psychic, and spiritual. The chakras organize the whole mind-body complex. They are the medium of connection between spirit and matter, body and consciousness, time and space, functioning through omnidimensional simultaneously. And... Another thing, the chakras are layers of compressed information stored in the chakra system are data pools that the soul utilizes to realize and establish establish higher organized states of consciousness. Now, this is interesting because, you know, when you think of the chakra system, it's like if I can use a, a a Star Trek analogy, a science analogy, they're like a wormhole. And all of a sudden you go from this dimension and they and, and they connect us to all these other subtle dimensions of which we do not have a lot of awareness about. Nevertheless, they exist. And in those pathways, those portals, are pools of data, of information that define us Um, and define and uh, once we can access those, we, we, we can grow in our capacity as humans. And so I feel the gem elixirs, gems specifically, are very, very potent and focused because they focus light and color very powerfully through a prismatic prism, a matrix of sacred geometry that touches into the chakra system that allows you to access that frequency of data information that's stored. So let's look at another example of that. Let me flip through this a second. And What exactly is an elixir? An elixir. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's a preparation that I make and... It's a liquid, so I take a precious gem, um, Jodish quality gem, and it's high quality prescription grade gem, uh, and it's cleansed, prepared, and set in a crystalline bowl of uh, purified water. And over a period of time, it um, utilizes solar light, lunar light, certain mantras, certain yantras. It's potentized in this water because water is a receptive element. 
and then I make a mother elixir. So this water element now becomes a mother elixir. Basically, this water element is now holding the imprint, the essence, the spirit, and the color, and the geometry, the vibration of that specific gem. And then from that mother essence, I can make individualized elixirs for people to take a few drops a few times a day that is like spiritual food, you know, it's a spiritual supplement. Does the water actually take on the color of the gem? Well, you won't see it, like, for instance, if I make a blue sapphire, it won't, you won't see the blue but it carries the vibration, the intelligence, the information of the spectrum of blue because it's coming through that portal. It is, you know, when you take a ruby essence and you take a blue sapphire, they look and taste the same, but their experience are worlds apart. Wow. You know, because... Blue sapphire, you know, let's just say the blue has an affinity for your nervous system. It has affinity for the throat chakra. It is a, 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 a ruled by Saturn if you want to use a planetary relationship. It has a lot of mystical properties. It causes many people to have, to, to have deep dreams where they're information is revealed to them through dreams. Some people say, well, I took the blue sapphire and all my pain in my joints went away. So some people have had and have reported physical results of using blue sapphire or any one of these for that matter. Um, people report emotional, oh, I felt so much calmer. I was so much more peaceful. I had less worry, less thoughts that irritated me. My meditation was deep. I fell asleep faster. <laughs> Those types of things. All kinds of good things. And unfortunately, uh, at least in the uh, in the uh, relative, all good things come to an end and we're out of time today. So, <laughs> Lily, we look forward to uh, having you come back to Fairfield and seeing you at Timely Solutions on October 6th and 7th, and the library October 5th. October 5th at the library, 730. Yeah. I look forward to seeing everybody, and thank you so much, Monica. I really enjoyed our time together. So did I. And stay tuned now. And I'd like to close with a quote uh, from the introduction um, of Awakening the Holographic Human. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Aristotle. See you next week on Writer's Voices. <laughs>